Doctor Who Battles in Time was a trading card collection which initially started in 2006 and lasted up until 2009, and across multiple collections it's seen the release of new series trading cards ranging between Series 1 right up until the end of Doctor Who Series 4, including a brief little foray into the classic series within the Ultimate Monsters collection. In today's video I'm going to be taking a look at Doctor Who Battles in Time Exterminator, the first collection released as a part of the Battles in Time series way back in 2006, covering Doctor Who characters, monsters, villains, and everything in between from Doctor Who Series 1 and Series 2. This collection consists of over 275 trading cards, including 231 commons, 28 rares, 10 super rares, 6 ultra rares, and 1 super rose, limited edition to every 1,000 packs. Now this is a series of Doctor Who trading cards which I have extreme fond memories of collecting as a younger Doctor Who fan. I can specifically remember the local corner shop right next to my primary school stocking these trading cards, and every so often after I had like a good day, I'd be able to go in and get a trading card, and then there was the magazine to coincide with the trading card series as well. And basically, recently I was doing a little bit of a clear out and just sorting things within my room, and I came across the albums of these multiple different collections of cards, and the memories that they hold within them, which despite being a collection of cards that I've had in my possession for a number of years, I think it is so exciting and funny that a number of these cards have very specific memories attached to them a while to collect because not gonna lie I wasn't particularly the luckiest when it came to collecting this series I got a lot of swaps consistently and I just had a really good time flicking through these cards and looking at the characters and reminiscing over these memories essentially from my early days as a Doctor Who fan and I thought that it would make a good video reflecting back on this time within Doctor Who history. I'm gonna get it out there immediately and say that this video will not be for everyone in fact I imagine there'll be people out there who will find this video incredibly boring indeed, as I'm basically just going to be flicking through some cards and going, oh look, isn't that pretty? But I thought it would be a nice trip back in memory lane, and especially given that Russell T Davies is back as the lead writer of Doctor Who, it is the 60th anniversary after all, I thought it might be quite a nice glimpse into growing up as a Doctor Who fan in the early 2000s, and if you are like myself, I imagine that if you did grow up in that time, these trading cards were probably quite a big part of your collecting experience. For those of you that have perhaps became aware of Doctor Who in the later years, this may even be a glimpse into a collection of trading cards that you were either completely unaware of, have never seen before, it's kind of a glimpse at perhaps something that is now long gone to the mists of time. I did a little bit of research before filming this video, and if you were wanting a completely sealed retail box of these trading cards to kind of unpack, especially for Exterminator, they are in fact now incredibly pricey, I do believe a sealed box is roughly around £500. So yeah, this is a considerably cheaper way to kind of be able to experience Exterminator, but yeah, I recommend maybe putting the kettle on, grabbing yourself a cuppa, because this is probably going to be quite a long nostalgic trip. So here we have my first collector's binder of Doctor Who Battles in Time trading cards. Now these are something that I always opted to have my Battles in Time collection within. They did do the travel case that was in the shape of the TARDIS, which I do have in storage somewhere. I mean, yeah, this is in fact quite a reliable pouch, to be honest. I have multiple of these, in fact I have three of them overall, uh, containing lots of cards. So this first folder here contains the entirety of Exterminator into set two, which was Annihilator, and I do believe the first 50 or so cards from Invader as well. So you do in fact get quite a lot of cards within these. There was certainly good value for money. I think you could send off for them or something like that. I think the first one was like a subscription thing, and then you could kind of pay to get other ones if you so wish to do so. But it's very Russell Sheet Davies era in designs. So very center, we have the Doctor Who logo with battles in time. I do believe that this logo never in fact changed throughout the entirety of the collection. It certainly has a space reserved in my mind from childhood. It definitely stuck with me. I say, due to this featuring the first few collections of Battles in Time, it is my oldest of the folders, so it's a little bit worse for wear, which I do think overall they are actually quite sturdy. Um, however, of course, naturally, this was once the possession of a child, so it has had a little bit of damage over time. Frequent occurrence with this series was the breaking off of the front cover. Don't know if that was just me, but I think all the front covers on these binders are broke off, so a good bit. A seller tip there is 
holding it in place can't be a good bit of sellotape. I think unlike other products, I don't really mind a little bit of wear and tear because little damages like that to me reflect the amount of times I opened up this binder and flicked through it as a child and kind of seeing all the various characters that were released. Of course, flipping around to the back, we have the good old PNG of the TARDIS, which we've seen many, many times before on many different pieces of merchandise. It's became a little bit of a running joke, but to be honest, back when this was released, this would have been completely fine. So we have the TARDIS there whooshing about in the vortex with the BBC 2007. So yeah, looking very nice indeed. And this does, of course, also double up as the background for every single card within the Battles in Time series. Let's open up the giant binder of childhood memories. So Exterminator is, of course, the first collection of Doctor Who battles and time trading cards and I'm going to make a point of saying now and showing off that I have a complete set and I don't normally show off however I'm going to take the victories where I can because I think it's safe to say with battles in time as the series went on I became less and less successful so yes it's all downhill from this point onwards this covers cards from both series one and series two so in my eyes kind of my golden years of Doctor Who battles in time collecting I have lots of fun memories of this era and lots of very unusual cards as well so I'm going to basically just flick through and probably pick out the occasional card that I like which chances are they're probably going to be the rarer ones or like the unusual ones. So starting off on this first page we have some good old monsters and villains from Doctor Who the likes of Sean Pegg as the editor, Gwyneth there with gas coming out of her mouth as you casually do and a tree person. One of the joys of Battles in Time was basically getting names for characters that appear on screen for all of five seconds so here we have uh, Koffa which is of course one of the friends of Jib, one of the tree people from Platform 1. Instantly we have an awkward card so I'm about to turn the lights off because this is the Gelf and it is a super rare which is very exciting indeed and it glows in the dark apparently. Oh it kind of does. It's a little bit, oh there we go. There's a bit of a glow going on, which you do get odd cards like this every so often, which were very exciting indeed back in the day. So moving swiftly on to our first double page of cards, we have lots of more exciting characters from completely Doctor Who series 1 here. Something about these cards, I think looking back, they do kind of trigger little memories from childhood just because of the way that they have been designed. Another super rare, this time it is Slothene, Bonfell Foch Pass Me A Day, which is just like a Slothene, but with like a wiggly effect to it, which was basically what the vast majority of the super rares were, they were basically shiny, but with even more shininess. Here is a rather cool card that I remember rather vividly from childhood. It is the Hovering Dalek for a rather unusual, unique low angle, which we don't particularly see too often. And because this is a rare card, we have a lovely shine to this as well, really nicely making the rain sort of stand out with the security guards there aiming at the Dalek below before they are, of course, electrocuted. So rather nicely capturing a great moment within the story. A card from the Unquiet Dead now, we have the brilliant Charles Dickens as portrayed by Simon Callow, an excellent performance, one of the best from Doctor Who series 1, and I love the way that we have one of the Gelf Phantoms there lurking or haunting in the background. And whilst on the subject of incredible performances, we have card 26 being Nancy from The Empty Child and The Doctor Dances, as portrayed by Florence Hoth. An incredible performance and an incredibly touching storyline. Well, this video has had a little bit of a Platform 1 theme, so here we have another one, one of my personal favourites, Mr. Paku. I hope that Mrs. Paku is in here somewhere, and we can have them both together. Yay! Here we have an example of this is a card from the heart of my childhood. It's been a little bit knackered towards the sides there. I should probably get a replacement for that one, really. Although I should probably focus on getting the ones that I'm actually missing from the future collections within this series. And here we have that one time that an IKEA storage basket was made into a Doctor Who villain. I wish we had monsters like this these days, just the sheer absurdity of it, of the budget clearly running out. But you know what, it's effective. This one is Scholar, from Platform 1, again. I was absolutely terrified of her. The vast majority of the early cards in the series are pretty much exclusively focused on Doctor Who Series 1, so we have a few exciting cards here, some characters more obscure than others, so we have Kathika Santi from The Long Game, and then we have Child Auton. I do love the way that some of these cards are named because some of them are pretty funny. And we have the Platform 1 staff there towards the bottom. This page also has a little bit of a Galf theme reflecting the different stages of a night out. So we have a rare card here, which is Mrs. Peace. <laughs> That's ironic, given that she's dead. And it's um, a rare kind of ghostly looking. Clearly she's having a great time. She looks like she's at a rave. And then we have the other Galf card of the set, which is Mr. Sneed, quite obviously reflecting the later stages of a night out into the next day when you're most positively hungover. 
giving the pilot pig a little bit of attention, because you can never give this character too much attention, he's brilliant and should have had way more screen time. Again, this is a good example of how these cards are really effective, but simple in their design, so you have a rather standard image of the pilot pig there at the front, probably taken to just show off the costume, and then we have that lovely inclusion of the spaceship crashing there in the background. Returning to the first story of Doctor Who's revival now in 2005, we have Auton Mickey, a rather creepy scene from Rose. I dread to ask him what his favourite pizza topping is, probably human flesh. And we have another super rare this time, it's Dalek Guard 1 or Emperor Guard Dalek 1. Again, very dramatic, it basically looks like a rare but has a little bit of a shimmer to it which is quite nice. Bit more attention for the Unquiet Dead, because this page for some reason seems to be littered with cards from the episode. Another one of my personal favourite cards from back in the day, because it looks incredibly demonic. We have a super rare Gelth Ambassador, with that red sort of orangey glow to it looking very nice indeed. And then we have the less exciting, but equally just as fun, Gwyneth. Another Gwyneth card, this time she's looking slightly less dead compared to the Gwyneth that we see on page one. She's looking just ever so slightly possessed now, so that's nice. Character development right there. Well, moving on to the next exciting page, I'm instantly greeted by lots of characters from the Series 1 finale, which is quite interesting. I do like the variety, I think that the overall series is laid out in a really nice manner, because we have not necessarily repetition, but a nice selection between the different stories. Here's a fun little interlude story for you. This is Nisha Nea, who does of course play Elaine the Pain in Tracy Beaker, so for those of you that watch CBBC in your childhood, you probably recognise her. Here she is as the female programmer. <laughs> See, I clearly shouldn't have known within the story. How lovely. Either way, she got shot by some Daleks, as suggested in the background. But a long time ago, I went on a night out in London, and I was in London with my nan, kind of just doing general touristy stuff. And it just so happened that on that uh, evening, there was a book sort of publication event uh, cause Nicholas Pegg, who does of course play the Daleks, he's a Dalek operator, ironically, in Doctor Who, um, he was releasing a book on David Bowie and I went to the sort of party because I was there uh, with my nan, which is very odd indeed, but yeah, I basically got introduced to quite a lot of people there and Nisha was one of them and I needed to kind of keep my cool because I just turned around and there was Elaine the Pen from Tracy Beaker and yes, it was a very unusual book, but it's certainly something that will stick in my memory for quite a while. Keeping on the theme of Satellite 5, we have Suki McRae Cantrell from The Long Game, a character that was quite really obscure within the story, she certainly had a good role, but she was played by Anna Maxwell-Martin, who has of course now gone on to be quite a big actor, she was in Line of Duty, she's in the BBC comedy Motherland, a brilliant actor, really really enjoy her stuff, but yeah, it's nice seeing her here in a Doctor Who story, in quite a minor role all those years ago. Is it just me, or did anyone else find Cassandra Surgeons incredibly creepy? Here is Surgeon 2, he's got his weird eye garment on, looking incredibly steampunk. Following page contains cards 60 to 80 within the series, so we have some very exciting ones on this page actually, quite a variety, from ultra rares to scratch and sniffs to the occasional rare card in there as well, and whatever these things were, never knew what they actually did. Starting off with probably one of the less exciting cards on the page, but I'm going to mention it anyway. It's a rare and it's just a regular Dalek, as it says there. Dalek, that's basically it. But the reason why I'm going to mention this card is because it's shiny, and it is basically the cover art for the Exterminator series that you got on the foil packets. So that's quite interesting that the actual opening blister packet also was kind of a card within the series. And there she is, the woman that we've all been waiting for, Mrs. Paku. There we go, look, relationship goals. Again, I'm really loving the consistency of these cards. So you've got the central character at the front and then Earth burning up in the background. How nice. But well, don't they look lovely together? Every so often within the series you do get those rather unusual cards which aren't actually from a TV story and they are somewhat kind of a 3D render. So here we have the sonic screwdriver with a computer pad there behind. Got a rather nice glow to it due to it being a rare card, although it does look rather unusual at the same time. I think it definitely stands out compared to other cards within the series because it's clearly not actually a real life scene from the episodes. Next up we have what looks like another rare, it kind of looks shiny and everything, however if you look closely it is a super rare, so it's a Sycorax. But yeah, the reason why this is a super rare is because if you look closely, it might be a little bit difficult to pick up on camera, but basically if you rub his helmet... <sighs> why did I say that? If you rub that bit, um, he basically has like a ridge on it. I'm gonna stop talking about this card now. Here's a slightly safer super rare to talk about. It's the Dalek Emperor, again returning to a rather similar format to the other super rares within this series, basically being shiny with a wiggly effect added on top. 
Next up, the sun filter is rising as we have the steward from the End of the World, a brilliant character as portrayed by Simon Pearsley Dare. And I love this character as a kid. Got no idea why. I think he was just very interesting. I think the performance really captivated me because of how calm and well spoken he was. And of course, he meets a rather grim end within the story and the sun filter. Again, a brilliant moment from that episode. Who even are you? I absolutely love the way that the Exterminator series allowed us a little bit of a closer look at characters that lurked in the background, such as this one, a female Chula zombie, of course a gas mask zombie from The Empty Child and The Doctor dances, looking very ominous there, with a wonderful recreation of the final part there in the background, just before The Doctor says everybody lives and saves the day and all of that. I would have loved to see more action figures of the gas mask zombies, in particular one of the nurses. I think they are incredibly sinister looking. And this is where things get incredibly exciting indeed, as we have our first ultra-rare within the Battles in Time series, and as I mentioned earlier, I never had the joy of actually getting these from a packet by surprise. All of them were tracked down at a later date via eBay, and I think, to be honest, quite a number of the ultra-rares now are considerably cheap, so yeah, that's annoying, although I think Exterminator still retains quite a lot of its expense due to it being the first collection and it kind of being a bit more nostalgic. So as you can see, this is a TARDIS and if you move up and down, look, it vanishes and then comes back again. It's basically, as you may have already seen as well, it's that PNG of the TARDIS again, which is basically on the back of every single card. So it's not the most exciting of ultra rares. And rather conveniently, just below, we have another TARDIS, this time in a force field, utilising exactly the same PNG of the TARDIS. But here's one of the more exciting ultra rares, and one that I always wanted as a younger Doctor Who fan, is Regeneration. And as you can see, it's quite hard to replicate, but we have the Ninth Doctor, the Tenth Doctor. It's not exactly the smoothest of imagery, I do believe that is a promo taken from the Christmas Invasion, and then I've kind of blended it with the usual image of the Ninth Doctor. But you know what, I love the glow, as you can see, that looks quite cool. The TARDIS there in the background, it works well for a trading card, I can't lie. I think it's probably one of the more effective of the holograms within the series. But yes, very cool indeed, I like it a lot. Finally, to conclude for this page, we have two rather unusual cards. I think Exterminator were the only collection to do scratch and sniff. Um, I don't know if it particularly worked, it's kind of like a 2000s thing, wasn't it? So the first one is Slovene. Sip fell foch pass me a day, Slovene. So you can smell him if you want, which I don't quite know how this is going to work. There we go, scratch that. I am smelling it, by the way, just for context. Yeah, I can't really smell anything. To be honest, I think that card has lost its smelliness, but I don't know what it would smell of, because it's a Slovene. But yeah, for some reason I've got two of him. Kind of picked it up out of the thing, and then seen there was one underneath. Don't quite know why. Next up, we've got Pickled Eggs. So it's one of these sort of hazard cards, and I've got a weird feeling that this one might actually smell. Oh, it actually does. I wouldn't exactly say pickled eggs, but kind of slightly off cardboard. But yeah, that's an interesting feature. So now moving away from that page, because I've been on it for quite a while, and moving on to the next page, we have lots of exciting things going on. Now, all of these here are ultra rares, so for quite a long period of time, this part of my Exterminator collection was incredibly sparse. However, over the past few years, it has now nicely been filled, which is very exciting indeed. And what we can also see is this gradual fade into Doctor Who Series 2. So I like the way that this series has kind of been formulated. It's not like the episodes are divided into series serial order or anything like that, but I like the way that we've started with series one and now we gradually move into this new era. Some of the earlier stories here, the likes of New Earth, The Christmas Invasion and Tooth and Claw. So the first ultra rare we have is Skin Suit, and we have the lovely Margaret Blaine there on the front, and she gradually fades into a Slovene. We even have sort of the zipper thing in her forehead with the bluey glow. I'll admit it's not the smoothest of transition cards compared to the other ones within the series, the likes of the regeneration card, for example, but it is nice nevertheless, and of course capturing quite an important part of Doctor Who Series 1. Moving swiftly on to the next ultra rare in the series, and it is the much more effective Dalek Buster. I do love the ultra rares that are like this, as it's very much a CGI Dalek from what I can tell, but then as you move it into the light, it explodes in a explosion of flame and glowiness, which is incredibly cool indeed. We have a spacey background in there as well. I do believe it's probably from Parting of the Ways, but I do really like that card. It's definitely one of the cooler ultra rares as a part of the Exterminator collection. 
have werewolf power and have got it at an angle which is incredibly weird indeed, but subsequently, I think it is a very creepy card. Of course, it's another transition from human to monster, but yeah, I think it's a rather eerie card actually, because you can get it in the middle, and they've kind of matched up the eyes of the werewolf with the human underneath, which is very sinister indeed. But yeah, I like that. A nice representation of, I think, quite an overlooked Doctor Who story. So yeah, a fairly decent ultra rare, that one. Next one, and another brilliant ultra rare that somehow has managed to match up the eyes, creating this rather unusual concoction of human and Krillatin. It is Krillatin transformation, so you have one of the tutors there from the skull, and then it gradually fades into a black smoke, and then boom, Krillatin. So yeah, again, it's not exactly the slickest of ultra rare cards, but I think it definitely works to kind of create that idea of the character transforming between human and alien, so that's quite nice, and I like that green glow in the background as well. I have always found this setup of having the four ultra rares together rather unusual. I would have much preferred them to kind of space them throughout the collection, like how they almost did with the other ultra rares within the series, but hey ho, it leads to a rather cool sort of holographic page at least, and we'll be coming back to these cards a little bit later on. It's been a while since our last unusual card, so let's have another one. It's Milo from School Reunion, and what I like most about the Battles in Time cards is at the very bottom it has a little bit of a description as to who the character is, which normally you don't really tend to read it, but in the case of Milo, it's quite useful to actually remember who the hell he is. So this schoolboy answered really tough questions in physics lessons, making the Doctor suspect something was wrong. There we go, that's Milo. <laughs> What was wrong, do you ask? Well, it was, of course, the Krillaturns. Here is one of the rare Krillaturn cards of the moon there in the background, a big silvery glow. So due to it being a rare, it kind of has that shiny finish, although the Krillaturn is at a very odd angle, making it look like he's kind of snapped his neck. I do definitely think that this page got a bit short-changed of the exciting cards in a way, but hey, we may come back to those a little bit later on to take a look at the more obscure characters. So moving on to the next page, and we have a page which I do believe is entirely made up of commons. Speaking of the previous page being shortchanged, I think this one may win that award. So we have a number of quite obscure characters. Fra, Fro Clovis from New Earth. One of the main reasons that I am doing this video is a little bit of a nostalgia trip back in time, and Doctor Who fans do always have a habit of saying, oh, back in the day when they used to release loads of merchandise, this is the type of merchandise that we are not having these days, the likes of Mr. Parsons trading cards. What a delight. Pulling on from Anna Maxwell Martin from The Long Game, we have another person that has actually gone on, funnily enough, from the same story to have quite an exciting career. We have Tamsin Grieg as the info spike nurse. Like her to return to Doctor Who, actually. I think she's a really cool actor. I think they could do quite a lot with her within the show, within a slightly more exposed role, as opposed to her, who appeared for like five seconds. For some reason, Exterminator did have a habit of focusing on the distressed women within the episode of Tooth and Claw, so here we have two examples. We have Lady Isabel McLeish looking rather tired, to be honest, at the host there in the cage in the background. And then we have Flora. Did you forget Flora existed? I certainly did. I Next up, can anyone smell a fire? It is, of course, everyone's favourite local arsonist. Kenny, who did of course infamously blow up his local school. There he is, looking suspicious. The Doctor never fixed that, did he? It did literally look like a child had blown up a school and then just wandered off. But yeah, here he is, complete with a suspicious look on his face, and a ball of flames in the background. Now, for complete scientific purposes, I'm quite obviously going to need to pit these two against each other to see who wins, and I've sadly concluded that Kenny is defeated on each and every single category, which isn't fair, including Fear Factor. Fear Factor for Milo is 900, <laughs> and then meanwhile for Kenny, it's 500. Like, he blew up a school! <sighs> and then Special Abilities, 2,700 for Milo, 400 for Kenny. I reiterate the previous comment, he blew up a school, I would class that as a special ability in its own weird niche category. What did he do? He ate some chips. Moving on from Kenny and his terrible ratings, we have Hot Pileen, brother number two, who looks like he's been smoking something incredibly strong. Even though we're absolutely nowhere near Christmas, let's have a Christmas-themed card. We have Pilot Fish 1, or as I like to call this card, Arsonist Santa. There he is, look, with his trumpet and flames. It appears that I was wrong with my previous comment that this page was a whole commons page. We do have a rare in the top corner. It is a matron casp with a claws out looking incredibly angry indeed. It's, a, it's the thing with the rares, sometimes the shininess kind of gets hidden behind the plastic coating, but it's not particularly the most exciting of rares, but nice nevertheless with a very green hue. A rather unusual page to say the least, but moving on, we have a little bit more variety. This time the first thing that I'm getting is a Cyberman theme, so we have a few people from New Earth, as well as a few other characters from the earlier Series 2 episodes as well. And you guessed it, Exterminator 
Bishop wouldn't be Exterminator without some niche cameos from someone from Platform 1. I do love when the series does a rather cool shiny Dalek card, so this time we have Imperial Guard Dalek 2, complete with a black dome, as well as this lovely sheen in the background and a number of other Daleks in the shadows there as well, so that's a very nice card indeed, it stands out quite a lot. It's the adherence to the repeated meme, I've not got anything else to say about them to be honest, apart from the fact the name's funny. I always felt like Jake was one of those characters that was meant to arise to something. I feel like they were almost setting him up to be a part of Torchwood or something like that because he appeared once or twice and then he just vanished. Got a super rare on this page as well. This time it's Diseased Man, so if you rub his face you can feel his lumps. These super rares make me say incredibly weird things. But yeah, that's an interesting card. Not exactly the nicest. He looks very grim, doesn't he? And this is just a regular common card, but given the title at the very top, I feel like it is only fair that I mention it, is The Host. Yes, meaning technically that this channel is named after a man in a blanket in a cage. Great. This page does also kind of return to Doctor Who Extra category as well, so we have um, Indara Ganesh from the uh, Slovene two-parter in Series 1. Nice to see him there, I guess. Scottish Steward, or Alex from the Christmas Invasion. Even have the President there at the very bottom, who does, of course, end up being killed at the end of the first part of Rise of the Cybermen in the Age of Steel. See, so yeah, an interesting page. We are yet to see a nice rare for the Clockwork Man, so I really hope we do, because that episode was, of course, my first, so I do love that story. And speaking of that episode, we even have Renette there at the very top as well. Quite a nice card, although again, just a common. So moving on to the next page, we have more exciting things, including, you guessed it, more people from Platform 1. And on a completely separate note, look at that hair. Incredibly impressive. I do wish we got an action figure of the Clockwork Woman. I think it's just such an impressive design, and it really is a shame that we never got to see that officially released, because I know there was a prototype at one point. To this card of Magpie, and then subconsciously within the back of my mind, all I could hear was Maureen Lipman saying, Feed me, Magpie, feed me. And for a moment, I was incredibly confused, but also really impressed that my brain had remembered that from a TV story that I've not watched in quite some time. Ambassador 1 and Ambassador 2 of the City State of the Binding Light. I do like how these cards give us a glimpse into characters that did virtually appear on screen for all of five seconds. So we get to have a nice look at the various different prosthetics that we've seen on screen. Although, again, two cards that kind of work together quite nicely using a very similar colour scheme. One thing that I do find really unusual of Battles in Time is sometimes the cards look absolutely brilliant. So we have the Cyber Leader here along the Cyber sort of army in the background, a lovely shiny rare looking very nice indeed. And then you get other characters, the likes of The Wire, which again, Maureen Lippmann, brilliant portrayal of The Wire from The Idiot's Lantern. But the picture that they've gone for is very odd indeed. She's kind of turned to a side, perhaps there wasn't no pictures available at the time that better suited the character. But yeah, it's very odd, so the variety of quality that we get to see within this series really too much else going on on this page. We get lots of rather unusual cameo characters, the likes of Major Blake from the Christmas Invasion, Mr. Sneed's made another appearance for some reason, Danny Lewenin from the Christmas Invasion, and then Sir Robert from Tooth and Claw. Unusual ones, but there's some nice familiar faces in there as well, the likes of Miss Moore, of course, who sadly passed away, the actor for her a few years ago, an excellent character. Headmaster Finch there, Anthony Head at the very top, an incredible performance within that episode. So moving on to the next page, again, we have a blend of what appears to be both Series 1 and Series 2. I'm simply using this card as another opportunity to say how much I love the Ood and the Ood two-parter, a brilliant story, really nicely represented here with the glowing orb in the centre and the satanic text in the background. And whilst we're on the same subject as the Satan Pit, here's Suki Minister, and here's Dead Suki Minister. Moving back onto the theme of unusually chosen cards, we have school children. I don't know if that's the entirety of the school, who knows, I might need to put them against Kenny later on to see who better fares up. And then we also have Cybus Victim in there as well, again someone who appeared on screen for all but five seconds. Rare cards are certainly going through a very strong period at this point within the collection, so we have Cyberman Group looking very sort of menacing with that fiery flame ball in the background from the Series 2 finale. Again, continuing on with the Ood two-parter theme, we have another excellent rare card here with Toby Possessed. And I love the way that this card is kind of capturing a moment from the story where Toby does, of course, scream and the ink kind of comes from his face and then it affects all of the Ood. And then, obviously, that's where the story goes downhill from there with all the Ood turning into the red eye. It's very cool, very much capturing that moment. And they've perfectly replicated that within the shiny rare kind of format of those glowing red eyes. 
And before we move on to the next page, we also have another super rare in there as well. It's the Cyber Controller with that wiggly kind of finish. Again, more than often, I think the super rares kind of blend in with the other rare cards within the series, as they're simply just a bit shinier than the other cards. <laughs> So that's really it for this double page, but overall I think it really captures what worked so well with Battles in Time, and arguably why when people look back on Doctor Who trading cards, they think of the likes of Battles in Time rather than monster invasions or alien attacks, because this series had a habit of having perfect variety. Yes, you've got those ones in there that you come to expect, the likes of Torby and the Cybermen invading and the Ood, but then you have those more niche, obscure characters in there as well, which yes, can be a bit odd at times, but ultimately make this range what it is, the likes of the Sanctuary Base 6 Guard or Tommy Connolly or Eddie Connolly or Cyber victim or whatever, it makes the series exciting and the overall collection just feel a bit different. And then we move on to the next page and again we have the continuation of many different varied characters. Funnily enough this next card is a great example of character obscurity as we have the Grask from the Attack of the Grask which was of course a Doctor Who adventure that I do believe was exclusive to the official website and the red button way back in the day. So not really a proper full broadcast episode of Doctor Who and yet here he has a card within the Battles in Time collection, of course, Jimmy V there in the prosthetics looking very menacing, but also quite funny at the same time. Rather unusually, we have another card which portrays Anna Maxwell Martin as Suki, however this time she's frozen. Good for her. We have everyone's favourite Doctor Who character, it's Crabtree. Who on earth are you? Upon the little thing, he is this police thug provided the muscle when investigating people with no faces. Ah, oh yeah, car in the background. Didn't see that. Next allotment of cards are the main reason why the Exterminator collection is the best. As we move on to Love and Monsters, yay, everyone's favourite new series episode of Doctor Who, and the definition of a story that has aged like a fine wine. So we have Victor Kennedy as the Absorbaloff, of course his true form there lurking in the background as portrayed by Peter Kerr of the Hoiks and the Doctor holding a stick, how lovely indeed. And then we have good old Bridget Sinclair, and no doubt we'll be seeing the other members of Linda a little bit later on. Who knows, maybe there's a clue in the name, but I do think the Exterminator collection did a brilliant job of presenting the Daleks. So here we have an Imperial Guard Dalek group, and they're flying along so you can get a little bit of a glimpse there of the hover bases underneath, which is quite unusual. But I love the colours on this one, it's really vibrant and stands out quite a lot, and to be honest, I would actually imagine this one being a super rare rather than just a rare, because the colours are that dazzling. The moment of silence for Tortured One's Queen it is of course a Von Hartman, as portrayed by Tracy Ann Oberman. I've been having a joy recently listening to her continuation within the Doctor Who universe in the Tortured Continuation series at Big Finish, and she's absolutely brilliant. I highly recommend them. So it's lovely to have her replicated within cardboard form. It's a rather unusual one in the lineup of the Exterminator series. It took until card 177 to get the traditional main card for that of the Ninth Doctor, as portrayed by Christopher Eccleston. So we have that rare glow to this card with the TARDIS there in the background. And what I really love about this card is that it keeps with one of the previous cards within the series. In fact, card number one, the Tenth Doctor with his floppy hair from his early series two stories. And again, I love the way that they kind of are similar in design with the TARDIS in the background. And then of course, all of these cards were almost accompanied by the Rose Tyler card as well, another rare with the, you guessed it, TARDIS PNG in the background once more. But I feel like all of these cards kind of belong together. I feel like they were almost the flagship cards for this series. They almost promoted the line and the various cards on offer, and they all look brilliant. Again, incredibly vibrant. The following page continues to take a look at some of the later episodes of Doctor Who Series 2, as well as the odd Series 1 card in there as well. Personal favourite thing about this page overall is that between these two pages we have the rather brutal representation of Mr. Skinner at the very beginning of Love and Monsters and then at the very end of Love and Monsters. We kind of have that suggestion there in the background as well of what's to come. So we have regular Mr. Skinner, then as this card says, Mr. Skinner absorbed in brackets just underneath. In other news, the Wicker Baskets are also back, this time with Scholar 3 from Platform 1. 
The rare foil cards of the page are also looking pretty snazzy, so we have fixed canine with that lovely shimmer of red there in the background. And then the other card is a Cyberman, so we have that electro effect on the hand. The award for the creepiest card of the page definitely goes to Dinner Lady, and I absolutely love underneath that it has in very small letters, Krillitan Disguised, which personally, I wish that they actually left off the card, and then for one person that opens this packet, they will be wondering why they've got a really ominously staring Dinner Lady card, if they've not not seen Skull Reunion, and speaking of Skull Reunion, I've just spotted this card out of the corner of my eye, and it is Nina from the very opening shot of the story, and the big, big question is, how does she fare up against Milo and Kenny? This is, in fact, rather interesting, so intelligence-wise, uh, she, in fact, doesn't beat Kenny, however, Milo, naturally being the smart ass that he is, because he's been eating the chips, he wins that war. Agility-wise, Nina wins over Kenny, don't quite know why, or oh, the same for stamina, actually, as uh, Nina's got 2,500 and stamina for Kenny is 2,200, what about, oh, of course, Milo's bloody stamina is 4,900, because it's Milo, of course it is. Special ability is 500 for Nina, and then 400 for Kenny. He blew up a school! <laughs> and then Fear Factor, 400, and Kenny for some reason is 500. So even though he saved the day, he's got a higher Fear Factor. But meanwhile, Milo's at 900, and... Oh, special ability is 2007. Of course Milo wins everything. Overall, for this page, some interesting characters on there as well, the likes of Detective Inspector Bishop, the Reapers, they've not had a cool card yet, they've just had a regular common Pilotfish 3, White Patient from New Earth, Exterminate there towards the bottom. It's a quite nice card page, decent layout, Ada Scott, who was of course played by Claire Rushbrook, who's gone on to be Tulachenka, Levchenka's sister in the Robot spin-off series at Big Finish. So yes, moving on to the next page, we have lots of these cards going on, which is rather unusual, it's a sea of red. First card that's leapt out to me is Cyberman in pain. Oh, how I relate to him very much. I feel like he needs a good paracetamol because he's got a bit of a headache going on. Not really taking a look at many of these cards throughout this video, and I think that kind of reflects my excitement for them because I didn't particularly like them as a child either because I never really played Battles in Time. I just collected them. I didn't have friends to play the game with. Anyway, uh, here we have Musical Weapon. Don't quite know what's going on there. It kind of looks like the Santa is riding a trumpet, which is interesting. I don't quite know where they've got that picture from either. Not have one possessed dude when you can have three. This one looks like he's riding around in the ventilation shafts of Sanctuary Base 6, which was a really eerie scene. I can remember that standing out a lot to me as a kid because it was very ominous, wasn't it? And speaking of ominous, we have possessed drawing. And doesn't he look very possessed indeed? Another excellent card from Fear Her, everyone's favourite Doctor Who story. By this point with the next Terminator, I think they're kind of draining the barrel of potential characters. So we have our return back to the opening of Doctor Who Series 2. With the Duke of Manhattan from New Earth, a rather interestingly coloured card with that white background there to kind of in keep with his uniform. A little bit of a Slothene theme on this page, so here we have a fairly regular Slothene 1. What about Slothene 2? Look how mifty looks. I don't quite know what they've done to the Slothene within this one, but yeah, that card always stuck with me as a child because I thought he looked incredibly angry about something. He's a council man on a council trading card. It is, of course, Kel from Fear Her, a brilliant character, and one I wish that people spoke about a lot more. He's an overlooked gem within Doctor Who history, bless him. We had the Cyberman with the headache on the previous page, now we've just got a regular Cyberman common card, but this card has always struck a chord with me, because I always think that this Cyberman looks so curious about life. It kind of looks like he's been distracted by a little fluffy, glittery ball or something. Very unusual. Again, something of which I think that Battles in Time did a really good job at. Bringing in another example, we've got another one from the final episode of Series 2, a Torchwood Scientist. She looks very shocked indeed. But then multiple cards from multiple stories kind of have a similar colour scheme behind them. So here we have Adiola, as played by Freema Ajma before she became Martha. So for example, the one for the Series 2 finale, it kind of has this bluey, sort of silvery background, and the main characters kind of have this whitish glow around them, which is very odd. But again, it kind of creates a really subtle theme, which can connects all of the cards together. So here we have another one of the characters, Ranjesh Singh, from the episode as well. I just like that. It's really satisfying. 
Here's a rather interesting Dalek card from the later half of the Exterminator series. It is Dalek Rib, and the little description below seems to suggest that Dalek Rib is a member of the Cult of Scarrow. And for those of you that know your Daleks, you will know that Dalek Rib does not exist. Dalek Rib, in fact, never appeared on our screens. Now, I did a little bit of research while I looked on TARDIS Wikia, and basically, Dalek Rib was the original name in the production script for Dalek Jast, and that was later replaced. However, clearly, word of that never got to battles in time, so here we have a card for a Dalek who never really existed, but I do believe it has now been written into canon in some book in some way. So I do, I like the way that this card has kind of came about, it shows that back in the day when promotion was a little bit better, I think it's safe to say, that these production teams and merchandising companies would get information about the upcoming series beforehand, so they could kind of create merchandise in unison with the broadcast of the series, and sometimes that goes a little bit wrong. Ending out the page on a high, it is a rare card, and it is the Absorbal off, and it looks like he's just said it tastes like chicken, but again, a very shiny card for him. But for those of you that have got this far, hello, well done, congratulations, I can't quite believe it. Here we have what is the final double page of Exterminator trading cards from Battles in Time, and again we seem to be continuing that theme of the later episodes of Doctor Who Series 2, including some more employees of Torchwood, amongst other unusual cards as well. Naturally, of course, no Doctor Who trading card collection will be complete without Gareth. Likewise, if Gareth doesn't excite you enough, we also have Matt in there as well, who looks significantly more confused. However, this card is a bit more exciting because we have a Von Hartmann in the corner. Yay! Moving on to one of the final rare cards within the collection, and it's quite a shiny one indeed. It's Dalek Sek and all of his glory, with that lovely glow behind him really making that black paint job stand out. And of course, you have the Dalek Blaster in there as well. This is quite an unusual card, Torchwood ID Badge, giving a little bit of a closer look at one of the ID badges from the actual story, so a prop that really only appeared on screen for probably a fraction of a second, and certainly not in this much detail, so that's quite a nice little easter egg, I suppose. Noticed Ursula Blake in the top corner, and um, I thought I've not seen an Elton, but yes, thankfully, I flicked back a few pages, I must have overlooked him a little bit earlier on. So together they are one of Doctor Who's most interesting of relationship dynamics. I think that's pretty much it for that page. I would say that as the Exterminator collection progresses, I think certainly some of the more interesting cards are towards the front, but now we end up on the final set of Exterminators for the series, and we end off with many of these sort of hazard cards. I do believe there are action cards within the actual game itself. God knows I didn't actually play it. So it goes all the way along here, and then Exterminator finishes off here, moving into Annihilator. So yes, again, congratulations if you got this far in the video. I don't even know if this video will be of interest to people to be quite honest and um, but yes if it is congratulations well done i hope you've enjoyed we have a number of interesting ones here we have the sycorax leader kind of surrounded by his swords and we also have this one slovene attack as well we have the claw coming onto the page it's kind of a more stylized card as opposed to being a picture taken from a story and we do start to see more of these kind of unique interesting cards as the battles in time collection progresses so yeah they're quite interesting although probably not for everyone they're definitely not the most exciting of cards I suppose I better finish out this video by taking a look at these rather unusual cards. So in fact we have two on a final page and then there was some a little bit earlier on as well. So we have mobile phone and sucker attack and as you can see the guidance thing is basically absent from the bottom. It's all fizzled out and you can't read it. And that is because you need this. Because why? I've got no idea. It's a psychic paper. I've got no idea if this will actually come out on camera, but we have that little instruction there towards the bottom, so you can't read anything at all. Then once you place this on top, uh, you might be able to read that. Personally, I'm currently looking through the viewfinder, so I've got no idea what that actually says. But yeah, it's an interesting novelty. In fact, this card here has quite a number of scuffs towards the side. I think it's one of the first cards I actually ever got. But this was something that, as I say, was present within Exterminator, and then as the series progressed, uh, this got faded out, so there wasn't actually any further cards in the collection with this, probably because the Psychic Paper was only available, I think, with the Exterminator introductory issue. So obviously by that point, that magazine was quite a number of years old, but yeah, it's an interesting gag, although it's a bit inconvenient, isn't it, especially if you were actually playing the game at the time. You probably deserve a medal or some form of reward for getting to this point in the video. As I say, I don't even know if this will be of interest to people, but hey-ho. 
someone might enjoy it. So here we have the final card within Battles in Time Exterminator, and it is the Genesis Arc steaming away there. It's not particularly the most exciting card to end off the collection, but nice nevertheless, and kind of fitting that it is the final episode of Doctor Who Series 2, as we move into the next collection, which kind of starts to take a look at the Runaway Bride, and onwards into Doctor Who Series 3 and beyond. But as exciting as the Genesis arc is, we can't end off on that high, we must end off on a different high. As of course I mentioned at the very start of this video, I have a complete Exterminator collection, and that does rather excitingly also include the rarest of the rarest in the entirety of the Battles in Time series, and that is of course the one the only Super Rose. Yay! I can remember when this card used to go for an absolute fortune. Not anymore. I think you can get it fairly cheap, to be quite honest. However, it's still a lovely memory. So yeah, this is Super Rose. I do believe she was limited to every 1,000 packets or something like that. And then, you know, she's got that code there towards the bottom. Is of course, taken from uh, the final of Doctor Who Series 1. Giving you a little bit of a closer up since it is Super Rose. There you go. She's got glowy eyes and then she turns into the bad wolf with the glow. And of course, rather unusually at the bottom as well, she doesn't have any classification or anything like that. Not rare, not common, no description whatsoever. It's a very unusual card because it kind of goes against the format of this entire series as well as not including Exterminator at the bottom or even a card number. Of course, the other unique thing for this card, arguably the most unique thing, is if you switch it over, we have the usual layout, but this time the TARDIS and the Vortex has this lovely sort of foil finish. This is the only card within the entirety of the collection that has this finish. See, so yeah, I dare say that this is probably more exciting than the actual front, to be quite honest, but this, of course, is like the pinnacle of a Battles in Time collection. That, or I do believe that Adipose computer from the Devastator collection, which is rare for completely different reasons entirely. But yeah, there we go. That is it. That is concluding Doctor Who Battles in Time, the Exterminator series of the rarest of the rarest Super Rose. So there we have it. That concludes this video looking back on Doctor Who Battles in Time Collection 1 entitled Exterminator. This has been quite a long video and I presume if you've got to this point then you've probably enjoyed the nostalgia trip and looking at the varied characters, some of them more obvious than others of course from Doctor Who Series 1 and 2. I have really enjoyed putting this video together and if you would like to see more videos in the future in a similar vein to this, taking a look at Annihilator, Invader, Devastator, Ultimate Monster and all of those then maybe leave a comment in the comment section below or like this video to show some support and who knows I may get round to the other collections in the future as I think especially at the minute I must admit as a fan I have kind of fell out of Doctor Who a little bit I fell out of love with it and I don't think I have as much passion as I once did and I think that it's been incredibly rewarding looking back on collecting these cards when I was a kid it was one of the first things I ever added to my collection and some of that magic has come back. It's kind of reminded me of what Doctor Who was once to me as a fan and how much I loved it and how much it kind of had a very special place in my heart that I think it has somewhat lost over the years. So who knows, maybe that magic will come back in the future. But either way, I hope you have enjoyed it. Maybe even this video has unlocked a few memories from your childhood as well. So thank you very much for watching this video, I really hope you have enjoyed it, do of course stay tuned on the host productions for regular Doctor Who content, have a nice day and I shall see you all next time.